guys, it's Danny. Today we're making an update on the mycorrhiza experiment that we started two months ago actually. These are the orchids that we potted back then and we added the fungi, so it's time to see if there is actually any difference. Now if you don't know the initial video or what this fungus is supposed to do, if it's helpful, it sounds a little scary, check the video down below. I have an explanation to things and the start of the experiment. And although we should have made an update after a month or so after I started the experiment, it, it, there was nothing to show, nothing actually happened. I waited another month to be able to actually show you a little bit of growth. So I think you can already tell that I'm not very impressed with the results or with what happened. So let's just take a look at the orchids. If you remember, we did four orchids. It is actually the very same orchid that I divided. It is an Oncidium twinkle. I could divide it in four pieces that had new growth and I potted one in bark and terrestrial mix. This is bark, coconut husk and maybe a little bit of coconut choir. In the back there we have Leca, not semi-hydro, just the Leca used as medium. There we have sphagnum moss and here we have another Leca pot. This is the control. In this pot we did not add the mycorrhizae, just so we have something to compare all of these orchids to. And um, I don't know if you can tell, but nothing happened. Yes, the orchids grew a little bit, but not much. And also in the pots, nothing happened either. Now, what I actually bought was endomycorrhizae. It should be inside. And as far as I researched, this type of fungus doesn't have fruiting bodies, meaning it will not create mushrooms. Chances are, if you have a mushroom growing in your orchid pot, it's something else. Um, but some sources did suggest that they actually form some sort of net mycelium because the role of the mycorrhizae is to colonize the root and then extend into more places at once than the root can, therefore creating this net of fungal mycelium. Actually, no, that's not the word I'm looking for. Hyphae is what I'm uh, trying to say. So one of the main interests was to see if there is anything of the sorts developing in the orchid pots. Now let's just take a look at each pot and see if this happened. I do have a few roots here and there that have started to grow, have started to extend. The mycorrhizae only um, attaches itself to the roots, not the actual stem or anything. Um, so no, you can see here a really lovely root, but I don't see any visual sign that the fungus is present. What you see, the little strings, these are coconut fiber or coconut husk. So at least in the pot with the terrestrial mix, there's nothing going on. In the pot with the leka, yet again, we do have some root growth, some roots, but yet again, nothing that I can attribute to being a fungus. In the sphagnum moss pot, uh, yet again, it's kind of harder to see the roots here. Let's just look at the top a little bit. So there are some roots being produced here and there. In this pot, I cannot really see any roots because it is the same color, but I cannot see any string information either. So in this pot, there's nothing. And of course, in the control pot, which we added this little um, tie here, just to know it's the control pot. Again, we have the roots, but we don't have any stringy formation. Now, visually, we don't see the fungus. Maybe that's okay. But what about the orchids? Do they actually look like they're doing anything rather unusual or better than usual? To be honest, no. Considering my experience with twinkles, I don't find anything special about them. I don't find anything special with the orchids that I added the mycorrhizae to versus the control. What I can tell you is that these two pots that dry out very fast. I only have Leka here and Leka does not retain much water. Being that they provide a drier environment, the twinkles are not as happy in these two pots, the control and the mycorrhizae Leka. You can see I have some crinkling here, some dehydration signs. They are much happier in a medium, more water retentive medium actually. And that's no surprise, Oncidium twinkles love moisture. So from the get go, these two orchids look maybe a little bit better. Now, size. Do we actually see any difference in size considering they didn't grow much ever since we started the experiment? So let's just arrange them like this. These three are the treated orchids 
and the control is this one. Do you see any difference in size after two months? I don't see anything. The tiniest one is the one in uh, sphagnum moss, while the biggest of them is the one in the terrestrial mix. Does this mean that the mycorrhizae actually worked in this mix? No, <laughs> because if you look at the other video, the initial video, you will see that this division had the biggest growth. So it's natural, it's normal. This one was bigger than all the others, it grew at the same rate, so the others are small because they were initially small. And in between these three, which are, let's say, considerably smaller than this one, again, I don't see any difference. Except for the crinkling stuff, which is attributed to dehydration, I don't see any difference. There's absolutely nothing special about them. You can actually mistake the control one, which is a little bigger than the one in sphagnum moss, with one that I actually treated with mycorrhizae. But the thing is, the sphagnum moss division had a smaller growth. So there we have it. Visually, there is no difference. I didn't notice any, let's say, spectacular growth, faster growth or anything. If you remember yesterday, immediately I told you that my cat layers are doing something different. I know my orchids very well. I can guarantee and vouch that these guys don't grow out of the ordinary fast or vigorous or anything of the sorts. Let's take a look at the leaves. You can see my twinkles do have some dieback, some spotting, you know, like twinkles do. Do the new growths have them? Well, the one in terrestrial mix, no. So far, it does not have spotting on the leaves. The other one in the leca, no, it doesn't have anything yet. The one in moss, no. Now the control without mycorrhizae, no, it doesn't have spotting. So not even with the spotting situation or the fungal situation, whatever you wanna call that spotting, there is no difference between the control and the treated orchids. So I cannot say it has helped with the spotting situation or anything of the sorts. So once again, after two months, I do not see absolutely any evidence that the mycorrhizae orchids are doing better. Furthermore, the control group has two new growths. So it has to work double in a medium which is not to its liking. I have to water it more often. So there we have it. This guy without any mycorrhizae help with nutrients and stuff of the sorts is doing just as well as the others. Well, well, bad, depending how you look at things. They're the same in my opinion. So do we draw the conclusion that the mycorrhizae is just another product that wants to supplement a so-called need just because, I don't know, some articles mention mycorrhizae? I don't know, I'm not the one to tell. I only did an experiment on four orchids. It's not conclusive at all, but I do wanna point out something, and this is a comment left by one of my subscribers, which I thought was very interesting. So I'll add it on the screen right now. As my viewer was saying, how do we know exactly what strains of mycorrhizae were used in this product? Because the little bag of soil didn't actually come with ingredients. It has some mycorrhizae. But these fungi are different from plant to plant. Orchid mycorrhizae are different from crops in general. And it makes sense, especially because orchids are epiphytic. Well, the vast majority of them, the ones that we grow in our house. The mycorrhizae for epiphytic orchids will be different than the ones for terrestrial orchids, I suspect as well. So how do we know that in that little satchel, if you remember the video, how do we know we have the correct mycorrhizae? How do we actually know there is something in there? We, we don't. We just go and trust and we trust that the product has some fungi mycelium. But this actually leads the way to another topic. What we can achieve in our growth spaces, our little uh, artificial nature, and what actually happens in nature. I did actually talk about this subject a lot of times in the past, so I will not insist, but every once in a while I do get that comment from somebody who doesn't really understand why our shelves are not equal to the tree in nature. And the more you get to learn about orchids, the more you see how much of a difference there is between our shelf and the tree. And the mycorrhizae situation is just one of them. In my previous videos, I always told you about the bacterial and microbial microclimate in nature. There we go, the fungal microclimate as well. These things, sadly, we cannot really copy in our growth spaces. There's nothing wrong with trying to provide the temperature, the light, the humidity that these orchids do receive in nature, these are things that are easy for us to provide, even with the use of humidifiers or air conditioners. But when it comes to the microbial climate, every little creature, every little bacteria and entity in nature, they play a role. Even the pathogens, in the end, they do strengthen the species, the plant itself. 
Well, we cannot copy these no matter how much we try. Furthermore, in our environment, we have a totally different pathogenic climate. Some stuff are really alien to orchids. They don't really encounter these in nature. And even if we don't have an orchid that we pulled from nature, it doesn't really have it in its gene to be able to withstand certain pathogens in our environment. So the difference between our growth space and nature doesn't only refer to the obvious signs. The wind, the sun, the breeze. Don't put water in the crown. Yes, but in nature it rains. What do orchids do? Yes, but in nature there's wind, blah, blah, blah. Those are very obvious things. But if we think about the bacteria and fungi, those are really not obvious. And for most of us, they don't even pop into our minds because we are not biologists or botanists. So in the end, do we actually need to really copy nature? Well, yes and no. Yes, from the point of view of temperature, light, breeze, humidity, and no, from the point of view of bacterial microclimate. It's simply impossible to reproduce it, even if the mycorrhizae worked. The mycorrhizae are just one element of what the nature offers to these orchids. And furthermore, trying to copy everything can actually potentially be dangerous. Because rules that apply in nature don't actually apply in our growth space. And every little component affects a different component. And while in nature things are balanced, in our growth space, well, have you ever heard of entropy? It's bountiful in our environment. So with that said, that has been the update on the mycorrhizae. I don't see anything yet. I'm still going to keep those orchids and see if within a few more months I see anything that I think is worth mentioning. But for now, I cannot really say if the product made any difference. So alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it and our little discussion here. And you know the drill. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As, experiments. And if you like YouTube to notify you when Whenever I upload a new video, just turn on all notifications for my channel. And with that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!